On this episode of Law Weekly, we talk about two policies of the government and its impact on the economy. A foremost business lawyer, Mr. George Atomi, is our guest. We also have the views of some senior lawyers on the whistleblower policy of the federal government, plus our recap of the top trending legal stories. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shieli. The large discoveries of cash in private residents across the country continues to generate reactions, but is the whistleblower policy being managed properly and is it having the desired impact on the economy? This was the first question I put to my guest, Mr. George Etomi. I'd say from the outset that whistleblowing as um, a policy thrust to um, find out about where um, corrupt practices um, occur uh, is prevalent uh, globally and that's how many of the anti-draft agencies actually generally work and simply put they reward people who give them credible evidence um, of credible leads that can provide um, evidence uh, from which they can find out when a crime has been committed or when they can find out the proceeds of crime. So by way of policy, it's a good direction to go. And um, it's always existed in this country, but it's not just been as articulated as it's been done. Uh, when the uh, current Minister for Finance uh, mentioned that the government was going to sort of rev up the entire whistleblowing policy, and uh, nobody was quite sure about how it was going to work. But from what we are now finding out with the uh, several discovery, especially of cash um, all over the place, it would appear that the policy is yielding dividend. However, one must not be blind to some of the uh, major criticisms or concerns people may have. Um, I know between the need to protect the identity, and it's important we protect the identity of the whistleblower, um, and the tendency for mischief to be done by any of the anti-graft agencies if they want to set somebody up. We need a little bit more information to assist the public in understanding um, how the entire policy is working. We must look at the very latest saga, still very fresh in our minds, the discovery of these sort of huge sums in ECOE. Okay, it's a bit early in the day to find out exactly what's going on. But it's a bit perplexing when you are devoid of information, the sort of speculations that can take place. There are no less than four or five or six versions going around about what is going on. Now my concern about this is that we must not present ourselves um, like amateurs. Um, in the eyes of the whole world. We're not doing anything different from what others are doing. But what is now happening is you're not quite sure whether it's in political interference, that's not making the whole truth come as, as it were. You're not sure whether somebody is not being targeted for um, uh, destruction. So much is going on. The, so between all that, we must train the anti-graft agencies in the methods that allow for convincing proof that whatever they're doing accords with the original intent of whistleblowing. Otherwise, they will jeopardize the entire um, um, well-thought-out plan. It's important that we begin to find out more and more. One thing that is not in doubt is that so much cash has been moving around, especially in a in, in political atmosphere in Nigeria. The means by which politicians fund their activities is largely done in cash. So it is, it is quite clear that there is plenty of cash sitting in various forms in different places um, that can be traced to the doorsteps of politicians. But if it's going to be a whistleblowing policy that should work, then nobody should be protected. Because the moment it is, become, it is evident that a particular find has um, um, a particular coloration and then a different coloration is about to be given to it, you could lose the confidence of the entire populace. Critically also, we also need to train the anti-graft agencies because in some of these cases, many of these things could end up in prosecutions. And um, the scorecard we've had from the EFCC um, about so many failed prosecutions 
is suggestive of the fact that the anti-graft agencies um, are struggling with investigative tactics that will enable them to produce the sort of evidence of convictable quality. Still talking about the economy and the impact of some of the federal government's policies on the economy, another major area is the power sector. Recently, the federal government announced some power assurance fund in favor of the generating companies as a way of supporting the sector, but it appears that it only addresses the supply side. What about the transmission and the distribution side? Don't you think that that needs to be addressed? First of all, I think the starting point here again is to um, give kudos to the government that finally, finally, somebody somewhere is listening that the entire privatization policy needs to be supported. Um, that's haven't been said. Uh, the downside in taking so long to address the issue is that because of the nature of the electricity business, the gap that has always occurred between a mismatch of the cost of production and the cost at which you can sell the power grows every day. And at the last count, we were talking about a gap that has exceeded 1 trillion naira. The 701 billion um, power assurance fund is simply to put the bulk trader, the Nigerian bulk electricity trader, NBET, in a position to honor the power purchase contracts it has with the generating companies. Because the argument is that the discos remits roughly about 30% of whatever they collect. And that's not able to service the entire need, especially when you look at gas supply. So this is meant to be that policy. But that's good, and like you correctly noted, that addresses the issue on the supply side. But there's still transmission. Transmission was not privatized like me and you know. The arrangement with Mani 